Hi, uh, welcome to the session on uh, cost accounting. In the previous sessions, we were discussing about different types of costs. We discussed about cost sheet. We discussed about the, the different terms on the cost sheet, starting from prime cost, cost of production, cost of goods manufactured, cost of goods sold, and the total cost. We also discussed about what is markup and what is margin. We framed a cost sheet giving the details of uh, different types of costs. And also we know that what are the different cost drivers that are to be used to allocate any common cost that exist between two departments or two product lines or two service centers. We had a concept of cost allocation to allocate the cost which is incurred common for two or more products or departments or service centers on the basis of an appropriate cost driver wherein we discussed about a cost driver, cost allocation, cost and cost objects. Now we'll discuss about spoilage, rework and scrap. Then we'll also discuss about a topic called high-low method. Here, um, in a normal production process, we may have some kind of losses, production losses. These losses are broadly classified into normal spoilage and abnormal spoilage. Spoilage is the loss of units of production that we expected while inputting the material, but the output received can be different. Say for example, we had an input of 1000 units of material. We receive an output of 850 units. The balance which you did not get in the production, the balance of output, balance of input, which is not resulted in output is called a spoilage. The balance of input, which did not result in output is called as spoilage. Um, the spoilage can be uh, fully completed or partially completed. The overall, these units, even if fully completed or partially completed or nothing completed, they do not meet our you know, specifications so that we can sell them to the customers as good units. So this will be discarded as a you know loss or can be sold at a different prices or can be reworked on it. So here this loss, production loss, spoilage, we have different treatments. The different treatments can be a normal spoilage which is um, very common which cannot be reduced at all. Um, um, a rework wherein uh, we can work on them to, to make them as good units and uh, we can even sometimes may have to sell it a, a throwaway price which we call it as scrap or we may not get any amount which is called as wastage. So let me tell you two things here normal spoilage and abnormal spoilage. The spoilage is of two types, normal spoilage and abnormal spoilage. Spoilage is of two types, normal and abnormal. Normal is, is due to inherent capacity means it is very, quite natural 
we cannot even after having strong controls we cannot stop a normal loss we have to accept the normal loss normal loss is a spoilage inherent in a particular production it can be evaporation the examples include evaporation weight loss shrinkage uh, these losses cannot be you know um, stopped we cannot control it therefore it has to be absorbed in the cost of production let me give you an example here we have an input of say for example 900 units 900 units of input this is a material given at the rate of say for example nine dollars total amount spent on this is say for example thousand unit thousand units of input at the rate of nine dollars the cost of the input is nine hundred dollars and there is a normal loss expected we uh, with our past experience that 10 percent of input will go into normal we cannot avoid it we cannot control it so there is a normal loss which is allowed on this type of production is say for example 10 percent means nothing is going to be produced so the entire units will go into nothing so we expect that this cannot fetch anything therefore we receive we expect that 900 units will come from this input and the cost of 900 units will become here sorry nine thousand dollars nine thousand dollars see automatically the cost per unit is increased to ten dollars nine thousand over nine hundred units so what i mean to say is the normal loss is adjusted in the cost of production means customer will bear it this is adjusted in the cost of production it means that the customer will bear it so the production cost will go up cost per unit will also go up because of normal loss so under normal loss the cost per unit goes up and uh, it is not a loss to the company it is adjusted in the cost itself so that the customer will bear it whereas in the case of abnormal loss abnormal loss is beyond our capacity means it is the loss over and above normal loss abnormal loss is a loss over and above normal loss so we have already a provision for normal loss why should abnormal loss should take place the abnormal loss may take place due to carelessness improper maintenance of the machine breakdown of the machinery poor poor or substandard material used in the production process inefficient uh, uh, operating conditions like um, laborers are not trained well not supervised well no good weather conditions so these are the examples of abnormal loss for which customer is not to be charged therefore from the production the normal and abnormal losses are to be deviated abnormal loss should be transferred to a separate account whereas normal loss is adjusted in the production itself and abnormal loss is to be char charged to a separate account called abnormal loss account then the treatment will begin now we understand that the abnormal loss is over and above normal loss and it should be charged to a special account called abnormal spoilage account and for, from there the treatment will start from there the treatment will start the treatment of abnormal loss can be either rework say for example here uh, we in, had an input of 1000 units let me recall my example at the rate of nine dollars the total cost of this input was nine thousand dollars now we already had a provision for normal loss at the rate of ten percent so we are expecting that the 100 units cannot be you know expected in the production therefore it will fetch zero it will be charged to the cost of production in other words the customer will bear it 
So the cost of production per unit will go up. Under normal laws, the cost per unit will go up. You can observe here, ten dollars has become nine dollars has become ten dollars. How many units, good units are you expecting? Nine hundred. But say for example, you received only eight fifty units, eight hundred and fifty units. So this is what we are expecting in good production. But we actually received eight fifty units. See the total what we are expecting is nine hundred units with the cost of nine thousand dollars. So there might be a breakage. There might be a you know um, an inferior goods which are produced which are not up to the mark. So this is a good production. A customer can buy. Good production, and this is the loss. Why there is already a provision of loss? Why there is a loss? No, this loss is due to carelessness. This loss is due to the breakdown of the machinery. This loss is due to the the poor standard of material used. Oh, then we have to call it as abnormal loss. Why? Because normal loss is already there. Any loss over and above. Normal loss is called as abnormal loss. Now this has to be accounted separately by calculating same cost of unit here. Okay, so this amount is to be transferred to a separate account called abnormal loss account, and we have a production account wherein the eight thousand five hundred dollars cost is transferred. See, is it now matching here? It is matching nine hundred units. Nine thousand dollars, but it is broken now. Broken down into two units. One is good production. One is a you know a abnormal loss units. This this will go to cost of goods sold when the goods are sold. But the question is that what to do with this five hundred? That's an issue. Customer will not buy it. So what to do with this? See the treatment for this five hundred units will be. 500 units or oh sorry 50 units will be say 500 units 500 dollars and 50 units of abnormal loss the treatment can be number 1 rework means our engineering department after verification of this 50 units may guide us to rework on these goods like some kind of addition of material or labor work etc by spending say for example 100 dollars so what happens is by spending additional 100 dollars this 50 units will become good units we replace some part of this uh, you know abnormal unit production and we made them as good units but we spent for 100 dollars to to you know make them as good units we cannot convince the customer that the customer actual cost is only 500 but there was a rework due to our uh, poor supervision we are charging you extra 100 dollars no customer will listen to you therefore this one you can charge to cost of production but this rework is to be transferred to your income statement as loss even though this 50 units are not sold in this year this rework amount is to be expensed like a period cost this year itself you may carry forward this 50 units to next year as ending inventory it will become beginning inventory to next year at 400 500 $, $500. but the cost on rework should be transferred to income statement in the present year current year this is one treatment one abnormal loss treatment one treatment two no no we cannot work on it we cannot work on it and uh, 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 we have to just you know scrap it say for example we sold these goods we sold this you know abnormal loss units for only say for example 200 dollars so 500 dollars is a total cost 500 dollars is a total cost but we sold it for 200 dollars at a throw away price so there is a loss of how much Loss is three hundred dollars. 
this three hundred dollars will be transferred to income statement. Okay, we sold it for two hundred dollars, and the loss is three hundred dollars because the cost incurred on these units was five hundred. So three hundred dollars will go to income statement in the present year if the goods cannot be reworked, or sometimes it may become waste also. Waste means it doesn't fetch any amount, zero, nothing. So in that case, whole five hundred dollars will go to income statement. If you observe here, the treatment of abnormal loss in three different categories, there will be a loss. The loss amount is different, but there will be a definite loss. So what we understand is that abnormal loss cost per unit does not change. Cost per unit does not change, and operating in income will decrease here. See, it will decrease by hundred dollars, or else if it is scrapped, your operating income will decrease by three hundred dollars. No, we cannot rework. We cannot, you know, sell it for a scrap. We just it becomes waste. Entire five hundred dollars is a loss. So two points you need to remember. Point one is that. Abnormal loss, the cost per unit does not change. Cost per unit does not change. Abnormal loss units should be recorded at a cost as if they are produced as good units. So cost per unit remains same. Whereas normal loss, due to due to normal loss, the loss is adjusted in the cost of production and cost per unit will increase. Here, cost per unit is not increasing. Same like abnormal loss. Second point is that abnormal loss will have a definite loss. Abnormal spoilage will have a definite loss, even if it is a rework, scrap, waste, whatever, will have a definite loss, and it will decrease our operating income. Operating income is decreased. And one important point is that abnormal loss. This is to be charged in the present year. Means it should be treated like period cost. How the period costs are, you know, expensed in the same period, irrespective whether these units are transferred next year or this year, it should be treated as period cost. Three important points: cost per unit of production does not change. Operating income will decrease, and period cost will. So the abnormal loss will be treated as period cost. Now we'll discuss about an important topic called uh, high-low method. High-low method is an important topic uh, to find out, you know, the fixed and variable cost. This help uh, high-low method helps us that. What is the fixed cost and what is variable cost in a total cost given at an activity level? From an activity level, when you find the fixed cost and variable cost, we can estimate the future cost. So, what you need to do is we need to find out the fixed and variable cost from the given output levels, and based on that. We can find out the total cost of an approximate or a forecasted production level. As you know that the, as you know that, the total cost consists of fixed cost and variable cost. Let me still extend this formula. Total cost equals to fixed cost plus variable cost per unit. Multiplied by number of units, fixed cost plus variable cost per unit times number of units produced. So, in a high-low assumption, uh, high-low method, we have certain assumptions that the highest level of output, lowest level of output, the cost are linear. Means overall total cost. From a production, will have some kind of linear relationship. 
say for example highest you will have high cost lowest you have low cost okay and it is reasonably it reasonably represents the relationship between cost and levels of output level increases activity level increases cost will also increase but it doesn't mean that entire amount is fixed cost it has a flavor of both uh, fixed and variable so in this silo method the step number one what you need to do is you need to find out highest activity level find highest activity level and its cost both quantity and total cost step two find lowest activity level its quantity and the total cost a dollar amount once you find these two highest activity level and lowest activity level find out variable cost per unit this is the third step third step is find variable cost per unit that is difference in cost difference in cost change in cost between highest activity level and lowest activity level divided by different in difference in quantity that is activity level between highest activity level and low, lowest activity level i simply said change in cost divided by change in units okay the change between highest activity level and lowest activity level okay then you can find out variable cost per unit once you find out variable cost per unit you can even find out fixed cost how that is the fourth step the fourth step is find fixed cost how do you find fixed cost we know that the total cost equals to fixed cost plus variable cost times activity level that quantity okay now this is missing fixed cost we don't know the fixed cost we know the total cost so fixed cost equals to we can revise this formula fixed cost equals to you can write down this formula total cost minus variable cost per unit which you just now found in third step multiplied by quantity quantity you have a question mark here which total cost you take highest activity level total cost you take highest activity level quantity you should take if you take the total cost of lowest activity level you should take lowest activity level quantity this will discuss in detail uh, in one example but here what i mean to say is the four steps you need to find out the total cost variable cost fixed cost and it helps us to find out the total cost at an activity level given say i want to produce 5000 units what is the forecasted cost of 5000 units of production that's this i'll give you with an example so step number 1 what you need to do is you need to find out uh, what is highest activity level what is lowest activity level both in quantity and dollar amount dollar amounts 1 2 3 find out variable cost per unit four you find out the fixed cost that is total cost minus variable cost or the highest output level cost or lowest output level cost minus variable cost into units of output okay multiplied by units of output then you can develop the total forecast for a given production we can even use this information in the break even analysis this will learn in cma part 2 now let's see how it is to be uh, uh, you know used in the production process as you know that from the given information from the given information 
you can locate the highest activity level and lowest activity level say for example we are forecasting we are forecasting the total cost for the month of june if we produce say 110 units we are forecasting that we are going to produce or we are going to order 110 purchase orders each purchase order cost how much what is the total cost and what is the total cost of placing 110 purchase orders this is the past information for the last five months we have here jan to may okay five months not four months okay now jan to may we have five months data that five months how many purchase orders we made and what is the total cost and using high low method you need to find out variable cost as well as fixed cost included in this data what is the step one step one is that from the given information first of all find highest activity level both quantity and its total cost yes see observe it 180 108 105 so highest activity level here is uh, 120 units 120 purchase orders and three thousand dollars the next step is find out the lowest activity level among all lowest activity level is 80 units and its total cost is two thousand two hundred dollars this is the step one and step two once you located this uh, from the given information, you need to find out the variable cost. How do you find out variable cost? You had highest cost, highest cost of 1,120 units purchase orders is $3,000. And lowest uh, quantity was 80 units, which is $2,200. Let me now show you the information calculations using high-low method. The third step is to find out the variable cost. Variable cost equals to change in cost between highest activity level and lowest activity level divided by change in units between highest activity level and lowest activity level. If you remember, the total cost at highest activity level was $3,000. Please remember dollar amount is a numerator. Minus the total cost at lowest activity level was 2200 divided by output should be the denominator 120 units was the highest output highest activity level and 80 units was the lowest activity level so 3000 minus 2200 divided by 120 minus 80 units 3000 minus 2200 divided by 40 units will give you variable cost per unit of $20 per unit. See, we found now what is variable cost, $20. Now using this variable cost, you need to find out the second step is, you need to find out the fixed cost. Okay, how do you find the fixed cost? The fixed cost can be found by using the total cost formula remember total cost equals to fixed cost plus variable total variable cost total variable cost can be okay variable cost per unit times quantity now let us find out fixed cost fixed cost equals to let us rewrite the equation total cost minus variable cost per unit times quantity here you have to be alert which quantity should be taken whose fixed cost total cost should be taken please remember follow my advice either you have to take the total cost of highest activity level or lowest activity level only okay let us verify with highest activity level now I am using highest activity level information. What is the fixed cost? We don't know. 
at highest activity level fixed cost equals to total cost at highest activity level is three thousand dollars three thousand dollars minus variable cost is twenty dollars multiplied by the quantity at highest activity level was 120 units so multiplied by 120 three thousand dollars total cost minus total variable cost is 2400 equals to 600 dollars okay this is a fixed cost you may raise one question that what happens if i take lowest activity level yes that's what i advise either you use highest activity level or lowest activity level your answer fixed cost will remain same but do not touch any other activity to test your patience and waste your time don't do that you should use only either highest activity level information or lowest activity information let me check using lowest activity level it should also give the fixed cost of 600 dollars okay fixed cost equals to total cost at lowest activity level is 2200 2200 dollars minus variable cost is 20 times what is the activity level at lowest activity level what is the total uh, you know quantity 80 units right 80 units this is what very important point is see when you take the total cost of highest activity level you should take the quantity from highest activity level when you take the total cost of lowest activity level make sure that you take the lowest activity level quantity only it's very important okay then two thousand two hundred dollars minus twenty times uh, eighty one thousand six hundred fixed cost under even lowest activity level also six hundred yay we proved it but only difference only caution I'm giving you is that never use any quantity in between highest activity level and lowest activity level I do not suggest that don't waste your time in the exam specifically I'm telling you in the examination do not do any experiments because you are you will run short of you know the timing so don't be panic in the examination by doing experiments there uh, use either only highest activity level or lowest activity level to find out the fixed cost now this is not the end the use you the main use of highest activity level the uh, high low method is that we can forecast we can forecast the total cost for a given output level in the future say for example now we have the information of total cost from jan to may and based on our market uh, 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 information and we want to sell say for example uh, we want to place 110 purchase orders what is the total cost if i place 110 purchase orders okay 120 we know 80 we know or other we know now the total cost of placing 110 purchase orders equals to fixed cost that is remain same that is six hundred dollars plus variable cost per purchase order is twenty dollars times number of purchase orders 110 so you can estimate a budget of 2200 plus 600 that is going to be 2800 so if you spend 2800 dollars against a purchase order of 110 that makes sense so you're forecasting and giving a budget as 2800 dollars for pricing 110 POs. if 110 POs are raised but the cost is gone to 3050 dollars then we can question the concern department that why did the cost go up okay and uh, if 110 purchase orders are raised um, we spent only 2600 it's good there is a variance favorable variance by this uh, the profit will increase by uh, uh, 200 dollars uh, this is uh, you know the high low method used in uh, finding out the uh, fixed and variable for cost from the given information uh, 
and which is used in forecasting the total cost. I hope you understand and uh, we'll see in the next session with the methods of costing uh, wherein we'll be discussing about job order costing, process costing, activity based costing and life cycle costing. Thank you and uh, have a good time.